Okay, it looks like we are live. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and uh, I'm just checking to make sure that we are in fact live everywhere. It looks like we are. This is a unique video and audio masterclass today because we are actually simulcasting Adobe Live to Twitter Periscope, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel, of course, here on Behance, and then on the Facebook uh, Rush Video Creators page as well. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Now, if you want to actually follow the conversation, I invite you, please, to go to behance.net slash live. That is where the conversation is happening. That's where we're moderating it. And that's the one that I'll be reading today. So, uh, as always, it's great to see everybody here, and it already looks like we've got an incredible audience. Hello, Tim. Loud and clear. Nice to see you. Jessica Smith. All right, Steve from uh, New Zealand. Polk Music, what's up? Brielle Edwards, hello from Florida. Denise Nelson, Justin Perez, Jackie Robinson, Hamad Hassan, Jack Watson. Great to have you all here. All right, hi, Farhad Rajab. Okay, so, and what has happened in Desiree? Also coming to us on Periscope, coming to us on YouTube. We got them all over. Okay, so what is today's stream about? Well, I mentioned it's a little bit different. So first and foremost, this is all gonna be about creating your own intro video in Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with Rush, it is our cross-platform multi-device uh, editing application that you can run on iOS, you can run on Android, you can also use it on the desktop as well. So there's a desktop component to Adobe Premiere Rush, and it is an editor. It's for you, enabling you to tell your story however you like, very easily, simple implementation, but a lot of power underneath the hood to allow you to do great things like cinematic color, wonderful sound mixing uh, with great ease, uh, the ability to add titles and motion graphics templates. In fact, we have a whole series of them built directly into the app. And what we're really focusing on today is allowing you to do just that. Now, there's another element to today's masterclass, which is that we are inviting you to participate. Now, this is not a challenge, just to be clear. We have our DCCs, our daily creative challenges here on Adobe Live. This is not that. <laughs> but... And I'm going to read this for you so that you can really understand exactly what we're doing here. So whether you're starting your own YouTube channel or merely branding yourself for LinkedIn or you just want to share who you are with the world like we all do, right? There's nothing like a good first impression and that's what a good video intro is all about. So how do you embody and represent all of that in a single video? Well, that's what we're going to show you how to do inside Premiere Rush. So we invite you to grab it, to download it, grab it on iOS, grab it on Android, go to the App Store, go to the Google Play Store, grab the application and follow along. It's simple, it's easy. I'm going to show you all the elements and things that you can do directly inside of Rush. And uh, next Wednesday, uh, let's see, what is the actual date? Wednesday, February 19th, at the same time as this masterclass. So 10.30 a.m. Pacific time on uh, Facebook, Behance, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope. I will be uh, selecting five lucky participants who just might win a one-year subscription to Creative Cloud. All right? So again, not a challenge but just a way to get you involved, get you engaged, and start creating. And we want to see what you're creating. Now, you'll want to use um, the hashtag Premiere Rush or Made with Rush, and you can share your intro video or channel trailer on Twitter, on Instagram, or both. And again, just make sure you use the hashtags, hashtag Premiere Rush, hashtag Made with Rush, or hashtag Rush intro video. Is that enough hashtags? I'll make sure that we add all of the additional descriptions. I believe it's already here on Behance. I'll make sure that they get added to um, to YouTube and, and Periscope and everywhere else as well. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and switch over my screen. Now I'm, gonna, I'm going to depend on uh, all of you here to tell me if the sound and everything was working. Oh, and by the way, a um, couple of requirements regarding this participation for you to inspire others with your intro videos. First and foremost, this must be made entirely in Rush, all right? It's the honor system here. No way to really directly check it unless you send us screenshots of your edits, so it must be edited in Rush. Two, the intros must be shared no later than the 18th of February, so four days from now at 11.59 Pacific Time, PM that is, all right, so 23.59, and uh, participants must be 13 years or older, all right? Ravi, what's up? Okay. So much information, so much stuff to talk about here. 
Eric Sue, I want it. Okay, awesome. What's up, Kevin Burt? What's up, Alex? Okay, so listen, I'm gonna switch over to my iPad and I'm relying on the chats. Just tell me, can everyone hear me okay? Everything, it looks like it's coming through. I uh, had to reconfigure some of my monitoring and things here. So just let me know. Oh, and let me get rid of my, we don't need my lower third on there. So we'll take that out, okay? So everybody hearing me okay? Everything coming through nicely? All right, anybody in uh, Periscope want to chime in? Anybody here on Behance want to chime in? I'm looking at you. Just tell me you can hear me before I move on. <laughs> All good for audio. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Hamad. All right, love, love an interactive audience. And this is meant to be interactive. Okay, so when you grab Rush and you launch the app, and incidentally, if I were to just go back to my home screen here, uh, here it is, all right? So you launch the icon. This is what's going to pull up. Now this is of course showing all of the uh, projects that I've already got going on inside of Rush. So, uh, and of course yours will look a little bit different if you don't have anything. Uh, and you can kind of scroll through here and see a lot of various things that we've done. In fact, here's some of the content that we showed at Max. Hugh O'Connor, yes, that is me at the kit. I am a drummer. In fact, in fact, you're going to see a little bit more drumming in just a second here. Uh, all right, so these are all of your projects. Now, to get started, it's as simple as tapping on the plus icon that you see at the bottom of the app. And when you do that, you'll see that it says you want to add media or take video or photo. Now, the way that I've got my setup here, I can't really move the iPad all so much, but I want to start right here, right at the beginning. And I want to emphasize, if you're going to be creating this from scratch, now you may have already recorded some video of yourself, an intro video, uh, or maybe you're shooting, you know, your heads, shooting your heads, <laughs> headshot, you know, uh, uh, a single camera with some other external camera, that's fine. However, if you use the internal camera in Premiere Rush, this will turn your iPhone or your iPad in this case into a fully manual 4K camera, all right? Where you have controls over not just uh, um, exposure and exposure bias, uh, you have controls over things like frame rate, uh, you have controls over shutter speed, you have total control leveraging that camera as if you had all the manual controls on a mirrorless or DSLR. So if you were to say, take photo or video, all right. Now, again, I, this is facing down on a table here, so I, I can't really, I can't really pick this up because I don't want anything to happen to the connection. You can kind of see my finger. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go for it. All right. Here I am. Okay. Wearing a Deadpool shirt. Hello. Okay. Um, what you will notice, as mentioned, is that there is an auto and pro setting. So if you're in the pro setting, take a look at what you have down below, all right? So first and foremost, you have options for ISO, shutter, and exposure, right? And I want to emphasize what's so awesome about shutter. Well, if you're going to be shooting in, let's say, 24 frames per second, you can actually set the exact shutter speed that you need for the appropriate motion blur. So anybody who shoots at 24 frames, you actually want it to be 1 48th of a second for your shutter. You can't typically do that on a DSLR or mirrorless. It's usually rounded, right? It's 1 50th or something like that. You have total control over this. So freaking cool, all right? As well as ISO and everything else, all right? Then you've got exposure bias in here, okay? Then you have your white balancing. So you can see it's set here to auto. I can turn that off. Now I can set the white balance in the camera. All right? Is everyone in the chat quiet because you're mesmerized by how much you can do in the Rush camera? You should be, right? There's a lot of great apps out there that turn your you know, iI device or Android device into a manual camera because you don't have all those access, access to all those controls in the native camera app. But we do it for you, just like in Lightroom. So again, if you're familiar with Lightroom CC and you've done this, this is gonna feel real familiar to you, okay? And of course, you've got some autofocus options here, zoom options, and then all of your various resolutions. Now this will, of course, uh, be different depending upon the device that you're working on. So I can't tell you for certain, oh yes, you're gonna have 4K, all of these other things. Uh, in this case, and this is a pretty old iPad. I was shocked to see that this one actually does, if you look, I can't zoom here. 
1080p 120 on the iPad, which I shot some, you'll see in a moment, and even 4K, and I think for 4K, yeah, it offers 24, 25, and 30. That's the limitation of this iPad. This is a, it's a pro, but it's about three years old already. I think this is the first generation pro. So again, with the newer phones, newer devices, you'll have all of the available options to you that are supported in there, all right? And then you just start filming. Now, the benefit of doing that, of course, is that when you shoot stuff, it'll automatically, you can add it directly to a timeline. So it just skips the step of having to, uh, having to work with, you know, bring footage in. Now, of course, uh, with iOS, you can bring stuff in off media cards into Lightroom, and it's just easier to move stuff around into files or your camera roll. You can access all of that anyway in Rush. But the point is, shooting in the camera is awesome. Now, Having said that as well, if you wanted to build a project with media that's already on the device, you can tap add media. And now this gives you access to uh, your camera roll, to again, just the videos in your camera roll, photos, your albums, audio, we'll get back there, Creative Cloud. So if you store or synchronize your content in Creative Cloud Storage, you can access it there. Dropbox as well, which I'll be coming back to a little bit later towards the end because I tend to store a lot of my music and other things um, in Dropbox, okay? And then Rush Soundtracks, yes, we've just added actually 23 new royalty-free soundtracks to the collection. So not only are there motion graphics templates built into Rush, animated titles, animated transitions, animated call-out boxes, animate, animated subscribe buttons and all that stuff. We've also got royalty-free music that you can use anywhere, everywhere, anytime you want. I'm a musician, I make my own, but you've got stuff available here too. All right, couple questions in here. Brielle's digging it, Hugh Filmic, yes, Hugh O'Connor. That's the one I used forever. I'm the first to say, Filmic Pro, it is awesome, right? Terrific. But now that I've got Rush, I, I mean, I already paid my 20 bucks for Filmic, so it's still there, but the Rush camera's great. Okay, it's real nice, all right? Brad Friedman, is Rush compatible with Android? Yes, it is. Um, of course, Android has many, many flavors. So if you go to the Rush um, About page on adobe.com, it'll tell you the currently uh, supported devices. Most of your newer Samsung, I believe S, S8 and above, all of those are supported. Uh, I don't, I don't use Android, so you'll, ha you'll have to look, but there's, there's probably about 12 or 15 Android devices, I believe that are, um, that are supported now. Daniel Green is asking, is there a bit rate setting? So no, there's no bit rate, um, for the video that you shoot inside the camera. It is using obviously the highest bit rate possible based on the device. Um, and it'll use whatever that native flavor for shooting is on that device as well. All right. Hugh O'Connor, anamorphic lens de-squeeze. <laughs> Not yet, all right, but excellent question. Okay, all right, so uh, hello Nikon Punch, nice to see you. Okay, so again, we can add stuff from here. I'm not gonna do it because I've already got it built for it, but here's what I wanna show you what's super cool about this. Unlike bringing stuff into Premiere, which is our professional editing application where you're, you don't really know what's happening, you're just kind of bringing in footage. If you don't, if you don't know Premiere, Let's say that I know that I want this video to be first. Look at the bottom left-hand corner of my Rush I, uh, UI. You can see that video appears down there and there's a number one. Then I want it to go to this video. Note, number two. Then I want it to go to this video. Number three. Then I want it to go to this video. Number four. Then I want it to go to this one. Number five. And if you take a look down in the bottom left, it is assembling, it's pre-assembling a little timeline for you um, to show you exactly what's happening, how it's going to lay out all of those clips. So in fact, I believe it's this 339 one we're gonna start with. And maybe I'll just, I'll just add all of these in here for now. All right, got a couple of fun ones in here. Okay, I'm gonna add those in. All right, uh, let's give it a title. So we'll call this intro WIP because this will be our work in progress version. I've already got one kind of baked for you that we'll come back to, all right? And then at the very bottom left-hand corner, there is a checkbox that you need to be intimately aware of. And you will see it there and it says sync with Creative Cloud. Now, you can disable that checkbox. Here's the thing. The whole magic of Rush, the beauty of Rush as a system, 
right? It's not unlike, I mentioned Lightroom CC. It's not unlike Lightroom in the sense that there is a mobile to desktop path. There's a workflow where everything can synchronize between all of those locations for your media. If you don't have that box checked, everything stays native on the device. So if I go to my iPhone later or my Android phone and I wanna just show someone, oh, check out this edit I was just doing, I can launch Rush, but if that checkbox, Sync with Creative Cloud, isn't checked, my stuff isn't going to be there, all right? So you want to make sure that that box is checked so that everything gets synchronized to the cloud, okay? If it's not, it won't be there. Similarly, if you have it checked and you go to the desktop version of Rush, which I'll try and launch at the very end, everything that you just did will be there as well, okay? Super cool, super awesome. Common question, well, does it have to synchronize in the background? What's it doing? Yes, it is going to sync in the background. Yes, it will create proxies in the background. It's gonna do all of this. You'll still be able to just start cutting and editing and doing your thing, all right? So I've got some clips, we've got them selected. Let's go ahead and choose Create. You'll see that it's going to start preparing the media, effectively building your timeline. I don't know why you're not seeing that on the screen there, but give it a second. I'm very small while it's preparing. Okay, hold on, it's still preparing, so I'm just going full screen for a second here. All right, oh, you saw it, you saw it flash to uh, prepare, all right? Let's go back. All right, here we go, very nice, okay. And now inside of Rush, oh, and hold on, I'm just gonna make my screen a little brighter here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, here we have our interface, all right? Really easy to understand UI, right? The whole point of this app is to make it simple and easy and intuitive to cut together your intro video, all right? Now, like many of you, of course, I did you know, one continuous take and I did a few different variations of what I wanted to say. We'll play that in just a second here. But let's orient ourselves with what's happening in the UI, okay? So let's start at the top left. You've got your home button, okay? A little home icon right here. Oh, you can actually see my finger on the screen. Oh, nice, awesome. I didn't know if I had those enabled, okay? You can figure out what the home button does. That takes us back to where we just were, right? So we can see all the projects that we've made. The plus button, as you can imagine, this allows you when you're in the project to capture additional media, to add titles, right? To create titles from scratch, to bring in additional media, video, audio, etc., or to record a voiceover. So, you know, if you watch a lot of uh, YouTube vids and how to's, or, you know, I, I, as of late, I'm watching a lot of them. I'm super into fitness. So I tend to watch a lot of little fit, random fitness ones. A lot of times when they're showing moves in the gym, gyms are too loud. So people do voiceover. Yeah, well, you could have someone be shooting it in on their iPhone or Android phone or iPad. You come back, you don't even have to leave. You can do your voiceover right here on that device. Oh, the iPad microphone sucks. Okay, well, plug in your headset and record it that way. That works too, right? So you can do voiceover right there. And then you have this project asset icon, which is going to show you, you'll see that the menu flies out here. Um, this is your project panel, like in Premiere, like in After Effects, okay? Showing you all the assets that you currently have ready to be used in the project, right? You can even delete things from the timeline. They'll stay in the project assets um, bin, okay? Or, or uh, what do we call it? I guess it's a bin, technically. I don't need my mouse because I'm on the iPad, <laughs> okay? Let's close that, all right? And then down below, we've got some uh, some of the icons and things here <laughs> as I'm scrubbing through, scrubbing through my video here, all right? So the scissor tool, you can imagine what that does. That's for cutting. We're gonna be using that in a second. You've got this plus button here, which duplicates, okay? Duplicate the clip, all right? I'm gonna undo that. Notice at the top right, you've got your undo and redo buttons. We just made some changes to redo as well, okay? So I can redo that operation or I can undo that operation real easily. By the way, if you look to the top right, you see I just tapped on that circle icon, that's showing you the project status, the upload status of what it is that, again, when it was preparing the content, it's bringing that and uploading that to Creative Cloud, okay? Super cool, super easy, really, really awesome. All right, so that's happening in the background there. All right, then we have, of course, the trash can icon. Obviously, delete the clip. We've got this icon here, which is to expand your audio channels, all right? So by default, again, everything's kind of minimized to keep video 
front and center, all right? Then you have your tracks. Now, you're, you might be thinking, oh, well, this is kind of like sort of iMovie-esque. It's just like one track, one thing. Oh, no. If you click the track header there, this is, in fact, we give you four video tracks and four audio tracks, okay? Um, this enables you to do some really complex things in Rush, but again, real easily. And if you're, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, you'll see it in a moment. I'm not super great with like tapping and scrubbing with my hands. I don't know. I'm a concert pianist, but this is a very small environment for me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm messy, but it's nice that you don't have to see everything all the time. You can really kind of customize and you can also individually uh, expand the audio tracks for each of the clips themselves um, while in view, while in use. So it just, it just, it just kind of works. It just kind of makes a lot of sense. And then you have your standard kind of Adobe Move tool, all right? Now, a little more orientation again. In fact, here, why don't I just play a little bit of this back? Uh, you can see I was doing some claps here to get started. Here, right, let's just play a little bit of this clip so you can kind of see it. By the way, if you notice where I'm grabbing here, this little uh, screen divider allows you to expand the size of the video on screen. Notice you've got time code on the left your transport buttons in the middle. And then again, on the left here, you have a little orientation button here. This is going to allow you to visualize your content in landscape, portrait, or square. Now it's not doing an auto reframe like we have in Premiere Pro. Um, what's up, Voodoo Val? It's not gonna do auto reframe. It's, it is reframing, but it's not doing, there's no intelligence behind it. It's just changing the actual sequence frame. You may very likely have to go back in and kind of move the stuff around. But if I wanted to see this in portrait, I can turn it into portrait. So you can see there, it's not, you're not seeing it in nine by 16. It just kind of threw my, my 16 nine into, you know, this is what nobody likes, right? So I'd have to go in and resize this, of course. Um, and similarly, if I went to square, it'll just look fine and square, okay? But that's just kind of orienting you to those buttons there. All right, let's play a little bit of this back and kind of get an idea of what this looks and sounds like. All right. Just a little clap for aligning things. Hi. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Levine and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, you're going to find all different types of things. Everything from live music, live streams, tutorials, random weirdness, in the studio stuff, and I don't know, rant. <laughs> okay, we can stop it there. I think you get the idea. All right. So again, um, how do you navigate through here? Well, I'm just kind of, you can see where I'm tapping. I can scrub through all of my clips real easily. I was having a pretty good hair day yesterday, I have to say. Um, if you want to expand so that you're seeing more frames in front of you, it's a two finger, uh, it's a two, this all sounds slightly perverse. It's a two finger operation to do that. Again, if I want to see the audio, I tend to like to edit against audio, especially where I have pauses. By the way, I put those pauses in there because for most of your modern nowadays, um, intro videos, uh, channel trailers, which is what I'm basically making for YouTube here. You know, everything's very jump cutty. So it's like, hi, I'm Jason. Today on this channel, I'm gonna be doing this, blah, 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 blah. you know, there's no space. I left the space in there so I could cut it together so that it'll be real tight, all right? Jump cut style, yes, but super tight and just kind of move right through it, all right? So again, uh, two finger uh, pinch zoom. All right, move through all the various footage. And I just wanna show you here, this will kind of speak to a feature that we just added earlier this week. Um, I was thinking of capturing secondary audio. Now, most of you who are gonna be cutting things in Rush, and I'm just pointing this out here, this is probably not something you'll typically do. But when I was filming this on the iPad, it was right here in front of me in the studio with studio lighting, which is the only reason this looked okay. Um, my studio camera, which is on my right side, was also capturing me with the proper microphone audio. So what you just heard was coming off of the iPad. I have an additional version of that, which I captured um, with the uh, with my proper setup here. So that's why it's from the side. So if you take a listen here, it's gonna sound a little different, a little bit cleaner. It's the same thing, but I'm gonna show you something in just a second. So just watch a few seconds of this. Here we go. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and welcome to my YouTube channel. 
on this channel, you're going to find all different types of things. Okay. So if you were going to do something known as secondary audio, the typical uh, workflow there is you want to be able to separate audio from that original clip and maybe synchronize it with something extra, right? In this case, captured on a different system with a different microphone and a better sound card, sound device. Previous versions of Rush, there was no way to separate the audio from the video. Now, if you hold down on the video clip itself and tap, you'll see that there is now a function to separate the audio. And Rush will do just that. It's gonna take the original audio, it'll leave it tied to that original clip still, it's just going to mute it for you, but now I have an external clip that I can tap and drag and move around. And you saw in the beginning I did those, I was clapping my hands to give a little indicator. Yes, because if I wanted to now, I could take this, let's move this over. You gotta see where I had those, those taps. I'm looking at the audio waveform here, I can kind of see it already. So we're gonna tap and drag this in. All right, let's deselect this, move this over. All right, pinch zoom to make sure that we're just about frame accurate here. All right, if I were to play this now, there'd be a little bit of drift. So we don't want that. Kind of just get this right in position. Okay, let's go back to our track headers now because now I can first, let's just turn on the original camera audio. Let's scrub ahead to a different, a different take here. So let's play this. This is the original camera audio. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. And now, just done visually, so you might be thinking, well, is there no automatic sync function? Not yet on Rush. You can do that in Premiere Pro. But again, if you're gonna be doing secondary, just make sure you have just clap your hands. You know, if you've got a, a clapboard, even better. But just doing it visually, I was able to line this up. Let's go ahead and take a listen now. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Here you're going to find all different types of things. I'm a musician, so you'll find lots of music. You'll okay? And just like that, now we've got secondary audio. Okay? Super cool, super easy. So that's the new separate audio function. Uh, God, it's really impossible to find a decent still frame. Separate audio uh, available in Rush right now, all right? Jay Scanlon, it was good to see you at Adobe Max in Vegas a couple years back, good stuff. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Okay, all right, so separate audio. All right, last thing we're gonna reorient yourselves with is all the stuff that you see along the right before we start cutting stuff together, okay? So at the top here, you'll see we have T for titles, okay? So this is where you can add motion graphics templates. These are animated titles, this includes things like call out boxes that you see in YouTube where it like something animates on screen and points to something, right? Very simple, basic, modern titles like you can see here. All of these are pre-installed. All the ones that I'm scrolling through here are right in the app already. And if you wanted to use one of them, let's just take one of these that's pre-installed. I'll grab this uh, modern title down, all right. It's gonna tap it, and it automatically added it right to a track in my timeline, okay? You can see what the animation looks like as I scrub through it. You can tap right on the screen, okay, to do your editing, all right? And it's just, it's just really easy to begin uh, manipulating all of this, all right? Oh, whoops. I, don't know, I keep zooming out of here. I told you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little messy when it comes to tapping. It's just not my, uh, not my favorite thing. So again, we can tap inside of our text here, edit the text, do what we want. Again, you can kind of see it. We're gonna get to that in a second here. Just wanted to kind of show you what that looks like. All right, with that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I don't want that one here. Okay, fine. So that's your uh, motion graphics templates. Now, you'll see that we also have more titles. This gives you access to Adobe Stock. So here you have hundreds more that are updated literally almost every day. So you'll see some of these are just really, really super cool and dramatic looking. You can see right there, social media, bell notification, uh, neon vibes, LA story, like just, you know, you can just scan through these. There's 29 pages of them, all right? Lots of different options here. Daily news ones, 
some that are very, very, um, really quite, quite cool, like pretty significant looking, pretty decent animation. Again, some standard YouTube looking play icons. All right, here's like a, a, a reveal transition. So this is something cool too. Um, you can also just t tap and drag and drop one of these into your timeline. Transitional elements are awesome because this allows you, instead of doing something like a cross dissolve, or maybe you don't want that jump cut, maybe you want to smooth the transition over, well, you can use something like this. In any case, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you. Right? Right? Just little graphical elements. And if you tap on the edit button here, you'll see that we give you the ability. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that still. Look at my face right there. Okay. We allow you to edit the color, the style, you know, all, all different parts of this motion graphics template um, really easily. I mean, it's just, it's just super cool that we give you all that editability. Okay. So all of that's available to you. Uh, right on screen, right inside the app there, okay? A little bit of transitional elements with titles and again, more titles via Adobe Stock. We'll come back to this, lots more to show. Okay, uh, the next one down here is or are transitions. All right, so if we were to go to the top of this edit here, now again, I've got all this stuff where I'm like tapping and um, trying to get started. Let's... Uh, add something like a cross dissolve. Oh, cross dissolve. No, I don't want that selected. To this clip, okay? And you'll see that when I drag it over top of there, I hope that's coming through on the stream, you have this little icon right here. This represents your cross dissolve, your fade up from black, all right? So it looks like that. As you would imagine, you can just tap the edge, whoops, and expand the duration of it. Or if you double tap it, oh, what? Man, my iPad is just like freaking out today. What is happening here? What is happening? There we go. All right, tap our transition. I'm trying to. <laughs> it just isn't playing nicely. Please, just go bigger. There we go, okay. We can expand it out a little bit. I don't know why we're not seeing the detail. Oh, there we go. Okay, the double tap worked. You can also just adjust the duration right here. So if you wanted like a two second or a three second fade up from black, usually I'll do that via a double tap. Play this back now. All right, oh, that, and it was caching that video, so it wasn't as smooth as it should have looked. There you go, let's try that again. Mm, okay, you get the idea. Nice slow fade up from black on what is basically nothing there. <laughs> nothing in that shot. Okay, so that's your transitions, all right. We call it Adobe Live every time, Eric Sue. So true. Okay, now let's get to something else. All right, the third module that you see represented there is, as you probably guessed, color. Okay, so we have a lot of built in presets to allow you to create, uh, to allow you to create cinematic looks with your content in Rush. Now, if you want to use, and I'm gonna take this off because my getting hot in here. If you want to use our built-in presets, it's as simple as tapping them while your clip is selected. Okay, what is happening here? Okay, I'm going to go back out for a second. I don't know what's going on. Let's go back in. All right. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. And let's go back to color. Okay, now it's doing it. I'm telling you, my iPad's just old. Okay, so you can tap through all the various presets here. You can see you've got like the classic bleach. This Fiji one is real nice. You can do a before and after by enabling the module. So there's before 
There's after. Uh, you've got an intensity slider. So you can adjust the intensity of these presets. That one actually looks really nice. Looks pretty good, really good on the skin tone there. I've also got some decent black and white ones. All right, film noir look. I actually like that mono one. It looks kind of film-like there, all right? You've also got the ability, of course, to store your own presets here, right? There's like a matrixy one. It's got that sort of a greenish hue. And again, we can back off the intensity or increase the intensity however we like, all right? SL Gold, that's giving you that classic teal and orange kind of look, if that's your thing. Now, already you might be thinking, okay, well, that's there's only, you know, X number of presets. What, uh, what if I want to do it manually? What if I don't like any of those? Well, tap on the edit button here, and now you have access to the basic panel that you'll find in Premiere Pro's Lumetri Color Panel. Also, this basic and advanced panel represent elements that you also see in the Lightroom Develop module, in Lightroom Classic, and in Lightroom CC. So, exposure, contrast, complete access to all of these things, all right? So if we wanna go sort of a slightly more filmic look, drop our contrast, maybe bring down the highlights a bit, give us, bring back a little shadow detail there. And again, I like the temperature, actually. The white balance looks pretty good. Um, maybe I'll give it a little bit more vibrance, okay? Careful with our saturation there. And then you'll see under advanced, we have faded film to give it a slightly more film-like aesthetic. All right, I love using that. Sharpening, use that carefully. All right, and then vignette. And this is the exact same vignette that you have in Lumetri, the same vignette that you have in Lightroom. It looks awesome. All right, we can play this again. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Okay, super nice, really easy always non-destructive. If you just double tap the sliders, it'll go back to the standard center position, all right? So really easy to navigate and do color. And again, if you say, oh, I love this, I wanna use this look on other clips, tap the triple dot icon that you see there at the top of the color panel, and you choose Create Preset. And I can call this, uh, you know, Warm Vignette. Save, all right? So now when we go to another clip, all right, so this one doesn't have any color here. Let's go to the presets. Your presets, there it is, warm vignette, tap it, and now it's already done, all right? Really simple. I mean, it's a really awesome way to just customize your look and apply it real quickly to your footage, okay? Sweet. All right. Three more buttons to go, and then uh, we're almost done. We're almost out of time here, okay? But I wanna show you how to use all these things, and then we'll just cut a little bit, and then I'll show you some examples, okay? So speed is the next one, and this is something that we added uh, just back in um, back in uh, November, all right? This was something actually that I showed on stage at Adobe Max in LA. And as you saw, one of the awesome things about this iPad is that this iPad can shoot 1080, 120 frames per second. So again, that's the benefit of being able to take advantage of whatever you can do on your device. It, sh it can shoot at 120 frames. That means that your slow-mo is going to be glorious. It's going to look amazing. So it's really simple to use. In fact, we made this even better than the Premiere Pro implementation. So first and foremost, you have these range sliders at the top left and right of your clip. So let's say that you don't want the whole thing slow-mo, right? You can see I'm doing like a hair shake here because I'm just that kind of narcissist. All right, so maybe I want it to start there and I want it to end. I was doing a lot of hair shaking there. End there, all right? So just that section. I want this section here, which is like way too many twirls here. We'll even shrink it up even more. All right, I want that section to be slowed down, all right? Now I can say range speed, and I can tap this slider here, and I'm gonna drop it down to 25%. Now when I do that, you see that that whole clip changes in duration, specifically the area between those two speed markers, right? So now it understands exactly what section I want that speed change to happen. Additionally, 
we've also added speed ramping. You can see there's a little checkbox here. So if we just play this back right now, it's going to be fairly abrupt. So you'll see me doing this in real time and then suddenly it's just gonna get slow like this. Uh, take a listen. All right, and you're hearing the, uh, the audio maintaining its digital pitch there. All right, now that's a very abrupt shift, right? Sometimes that's the effect you want. However, if you want it to gradually go into your speed change, you can click tap ramp. And when you do that, I don't know if you can see it in the UI, you actually see the ramps at the top and tail of that selection area. You can also increase the ramp time based on the total duration of your clip. So right now it's a half a second ramp. I think we can go all the way up to around three seconds is the max. And if you're looking at the UI, this is what I love. They did such good UI UX with this. Look at the blue ramp indicators on the clip. You can see it adjusting the duration there. So this will just give it a slightly smoother transition into that full slow motion. Take a look again. Oh, and by the way, maintain audio pitch. We hear that all the time that people are like, oh, I want that in Premiere. I mean, yeah. And if you have dialogue, it's gonna sound very digitized and, you know, it's not typically, you, you think you want that effect. <laughs> it just, even in films, they'll replace all of that sound if it's gonna be slowed down and everything else. But Rush does it for you because that's kind of the consumer idea of, well, if I'm gonna slow the video, the audio should slow too. That's why that's there. For my money, to be completely honest, um, I would I would just leave that checked, but I would go to the audio section here and I would just mute this clip. I don't wanna hear the sound of, you know, my hair hitting the microphone, all right? So back to speed, let's go ahead and play this and you'll get to see the ramp. All right, here we go. So real time, real time, real time, and then slightly slowing down and then full slow motion, okay? Oh, did I mute the wrong clip here? Maybe I did. Oh, I didn't mute, I just disabled the basic functions. I meant to mute, sorry, my bad, all right? So again, it's still still doing my hair flip thing, all right? And now back into real time. And again, it ramps out of it as well, right? Just watch the end of that right there. Okay, so cool. Now, the question people always ask is, what if I want to do multiple variations of speed on a single clip. Well, we only give you the two, uh, the two markers for the start and stop of your speed change. So if you wanted to do another speed change, by the way, again, as you're looking at the, at the video clip in the timeline there, you'll see it's showing these little dots and then the indicators. Let's say that I wanted to do another speed change here later on, okay? To do that, I would need to add a cut. So with the clip selected, I'm gonna tap on the scissor icon here. It places the cut in there. Now I have a, a new clip. It's still sourced from the same clip, but now I can add additional speed controls to this section, okay? So if you wanna do, you know, you see this really commonly, particularly with intro and channel trailers, where there's multiple variations of speed happening. So what if you wanna speed it up? Maybe this one, I, I don't wanna go slow-mo. I, I wanna go really, really fast. All right, I don't want any ramp. I don't wanna maintain pitch, okay? Something like that, okay? Now, now on this, oh, and did I set my, I didn't set my range here. So the range is gonna be everything. It's gonna be this whole thing, and I want the speed to be Notice it's getting smaller, okay? Wind this back, all right? It was so quick, you, 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 yeah. I mean, I did it 400%, so it was just, it was just too fast to even see. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. So you can speed it up, slow it down. If you want multiples, cut it, then that clip becomes a new instance that you can set separate markers for, for editing, all right?
All right, looking through our comments, our questions here. Nice. Gibosh, Jason's Angels. Very nice, Craig. <laughs> yes, always a hair flip in there somewhere. Okay, last but not least, audio, right? Don't want to forget about audio. Now, this is where we're going to be able to um, bring in some of that stock audio that I talked about, all right? So, um, let's say you want to bring in a soundtrack for your channel trailer, okay? And then you also want the ability to control the volume of your main clips, of the music, and more importantly, what most people really want to do is they want to be able to manipulate um, the sound of the music so that it automatically ducks down in volume when talking happens, okay? This is known as ducking. Well, Rush does auto-ducking. It automatically, using our Adobe Sensei AI machine learning technology, detects voice where speaking occurs and then will drop the audio of your music, which it also detects automatically. Super cool, super easy. Let me show you how it works. So let's go ahead and bring in some audio. So we're going to tap the plus button here and we're going to bring in media. Okay. And we're going to go down to rush soundtracks. Now, as mentioned, there are 33 soundtracks in here. We just added 23, so there were 10 before. Um, we just added 23 new ones um, in the last week. So if you want to audition them first, hear what they sound like, just tap on the play button. So I kind of want something rocking for this, so let's see what Garage sounds like. Wow, and these are, wow, you may have just jumped out of your seat because these are mastered for like Spotify. So they're hot, they're loud. I just made myself deaf there. Okay, sorry for that. I can't control that output right now because it's, it's different with everything else. Um, let's try something like uh, Echoes. Okay, or let's scroll down here and go to something like Fun Town. I think that's new. I like that. All right, maybe a little too fun. And uh, let's see, Captain Zero. Okay, yeah, you get the idea. So you can audition all of these when you find the one that you want. By the way, as I was going through these new ones, there's one in here called Rockabilly Rumble. This is the track of mine. I don't even know how this got in here. This came from, I'm not even sure how this got in here, but this is one that I wrote years ago. No idea how that got in there. Okay, so if I wanted to bring one of these in, let's, let's go with the Captain Zero one. I'm simply going to tap the box. You'll see, now again, you can bring in multiple audio clips if we want, right? Just as with before, it shows you the order in which it'll insert them. We're just gonna pick one for now and tap add, all right? It's gonna prepare the media. It's gonna bring it down into the timeline just like that, all right? And I'm going to drag this over like this, all right? So that we can have it play over this take. All right, now let's just take a quick listen here and see what this sounds like as it is without changing anything, all right? So I haven't done anything, we're not ducking, we're not doing anything just yet. Let's take a quick listen. Content on this channel. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Here you're gonna find all different types of things. Okay, so the balance is okay, but obviously we would want to adjust the balances, right? So there's a couple things we could do, all right? So let's go to our audio section here. That's gonna be this little waveform icon over here on the right. So you have your clip volumes. If I wanted to just make the volume of my voiceover louder, I could adjust that here with this, uh, with this slider, okay? If I wanted to do that. And when I do that, if you take a look at the waveform, you can actually see the waveform growing or shrinking in amplitude as I do it. So again, fantastic UI UX in Rush. We did, they did, the team did such a good job because it just tells you exactly what's happening, what, what's going on and what you can see it, right? Really, really well done. Um, if you tap advanced, 
here's where now we have some implemented Sensei technologies. So again, it has an auto volume control enabled by default. Think of this as an automatic compressor limiter, or for those of you in the DSLR mirrorless world, it's kind of like AGC, auto gain control, except maybe less aggressive, all right? It's just going to try and even out the dynamics for you, all right? Balanced sound is gonna work a little bit with the equalization to do the same thing. If you have background noise, now this is a really dry, this is a studio here, so there's no echo, there's no noise. If you had noise, and that's everything from to like, it can get rid of that. If you record in a reflective environment, all right? Now that's not to say if you record in a church and or you know uh, some huge large ceilinged venue and there's a three second decay of echo, is it gonna be able to reduce that? Mm, maybe. What this is really effective for though is if you record in a conference room or like, you know, let's say your home studio is kind of, is a bedroom or something and it's just echoey because you don't have treated walls, it's gonna get rid of all that echo. It's gonna minimize the reflective nature of the room and allow you to focus on the voice. Super cool feature. And then you have an enhanced speech function which, meh, use, use at your leisure. Not a fave of mine, do what you want. Now, notice that it has detected this as voice. And if you go to change type, it detects voice, music, and then others. That could be like sound effects or ambience or, you know, a lot of your, again, intro videos and channel trailers have really wonderful sound design. So based on the type, it's gonna give you different types of things that you can use with that content. Let's tap on the music. So notice it automatically detected it as music. Now you have auto volume there. You have your clip volume slider, but then you have auto duck, all right? Notice it starts processing because what it's doing is it's analyzing the dialogue. It's analyzing the stuff that I'm speaking and then it's figuring out where it needs to duck that audio, right? To make it quieter wherever I'm speaking. And there's one single slider here. How much do you wanna reduce it by? So simple, so easy. And if you take a look at the waveform, which I just expanded again, this is why having that audio expansion on the selected clip is so cool. Do you see the areas that are sort of grayed out? Those are the areas that represent the grade areas are representing where the audio is full volume of the music, and then it dips down. Now, 87% reduction is quite a bit. Let's maybe take it to around 60, all right? You'll see it reconfigure. You may have just seen that the audio raised back up again. And let's take a listen to what this sounds like now, all right? Real quickly, here we go. No keyframing involved. Let's go ahead and hit play on this channel. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Here you're gonna find all different types of things. I'm a musician, so you'll find- All right, so let's skip over to where, you know, again, I'm talking and then the music ramps back up. Subscribing, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching. Okay. Huh, what? Yeah. That's something that's done on every video, right? Every channel, if they're using music, everybody does this ducking thing. Maybe you didn't know what it was called. Maybe you didn't know how to do it. Rush does it for you. What? So cool, all right? And then the very last element I'll show you before we play a little bit of my channel trailer to re-inspire you. We have a crop and transform function here. You can scale your content right on screen. So just by tapping, all right, so if I wanted to scale myself up, you see a lot of that when people cut things together. Like, hi, I'm Jason, you know, you're doing all this kind of scaling stuff in the jump cuts. You can do that. You can adjust position, rotation, opacity, tell it to maintain proportions. And then again, you've got cropping abilities here. So if we wanted to do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> automatic cropping for left and right, for vertical or something like that inside of a frame, you can do all of that really effectively really, really easily. All right, let's go to the one that I kind of already worked on here. I'm gonna play this for you and kind of give you a look of what this looks like here. All right, and uh, take a quick listen, take a quick look at this one, all right? Let's do it. Hi, I'm Jason Levine and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, you're gonna find all different types of things. Everything from live music. Now you know the story about pirating. So let this be a warning. 
warning to prevent piracy. Live streams. But this is it. We are all set. That's all you need to do. Selection order, add unnumbered markers, and in this case, we're choosing overwrite, click OK, and just like that, it will build the sequence. You might even find some really random performances where I just belt out into song out of nowhere. That's pretty normal for me. There will also be some random hair tosses. All right, okay. <laughs> so here's this slow motion. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications so that you don't miss a single frame. And dip to white, okay? All right, my friends, so that is all the time we have. Again, you've got until the 18th at 11.59 p.m. on Twitter and Instagram. What you wanna do is you want to upload your content and tag it, Made with Rush, Rush Intro Video. And as a participant, you could be possibly the lucky recipient of a 12-month complimentary Creative Cloud subscription. So coming up next, we've got the Adobe XD Creative Challenge. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next Wednesday on the stream with all the people that we're taking a look at. All right, <laughs> that made no sense. We'll take a look at submissions. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.